Hey guys, welcome back to Day and Night Studio. I'm Dana Davis. I'm an artist, art teacher, and I'm doing some commissions here of a very good family friend, a super wonderful godly man that passed away and his granddaughter's commissioned this for his grandmother for Christmas and I'm excited to get started. I did add some of these cows for visual balance and the client said that would be great so I got the okay the green light for that and I've already painted his face honestly because I was so scared I would mess it up because I'm new to watercolor, I've only been working with it a few years and I'm learning a lot. So I have done paintings where I've had to start over because I have just taken them too far. So that's one reason I held back. I have been teaching full time at the high school level for about 17 years and it doesn't leave you a ton of time to do your own artwork. So because I've only been working with watercolor for a little while, I am giving myself a little grace to learn. And I'm building my confidence slowly. If you wanna see me paint a face, I'm going to put more videos on here of those tutorials, but honestly, I didn't trust myself to do it right, so I didn't film it. <laughs> and you know what? I may be vibing with you right now because that may be where you are too. You don't want anybody to watch you make a bunch of mistakes and have to redo things. So if you are, just know we've been there. I understand it's, it's a tough place to be when you're just growing and starting out. But keep it up. It gets better every time, even if you have to redo it, which I do more than I'd like to admit. And every piece I take on, it seems like there's always something new. I've not really painted any cows before, so this is new to me, and I'm, I'm just figuring it out as I go. But watercolor allows you to layer, and there is some safe aspects of it. And the more I take on, the more I realize local color is going to be important, but I have to first start out with value and edges. Those are gonna be dominant, early on in any painting, figure out where your hard edges are and what painting techniques work for those, which is wet on dry. And then the soft edges will have to be wet on wet. And those are the ones that I find a little more tricky because getting the right amount of moisture on the paper so that the paint moves the way you want it to move or you can anticipate how it's going to move, that is my biggest challenge right now. Hard edges seem to be pretty easy because I basically treat my paintbrush almost like a marker and then it applies pretty steadily and predictable. Now I'm going to hold my breath and do this background. I just need a nice graded wash and I want it to come right up to the back of this head. I want it to be this, this soft, soft, subtle fade. I'm using a larger brush because I'm working with a larger area. So you do have to scale up or down depending on your surface area that you have to cover because it really needs to all be wet in this background or else you're gonna see streaks or inconsistent areas. I'm going to use a similar value and somewhat similar color for this tree line. The picture, the reference that I'm using is older and does have a little bit of like exposure to it. So it even, I think, made this, this image even more interesting. I feel like I got a little too much, a little too heavy on the pigment, so I'm just gonna blot away some of that. All of these techniques are very, I guess, generic, very basic techniques. You just slowly, or I just slowly, get a little better at picking which one to use where. You 
So just like right here, I don't want this grass to blend with the sky or the tree line behind it. So I'm just waiting till it's dry and then I'm going around it. I mean, I might as well have a marker in my hand. That's how I'm applying this pigment. I'm doing some wet on wet here. So I'm just dropping in some pigment to make it a little less consistent so that this tree line has some variations in value and local color. So just kind of patting the surface. You can see that I just basically take out this little tree. I just don't think I need it. And I just kept dancing around it, trying to save it for later and realized it just wasn't that important to the composition and I bet it would end up being more of a distraction than anything. So I just omitted it. I'm gonna add a little cast shadow, kind of a bouncy broken cast shadow to these cows. Keeping in mind the light source since I you know made that part up a little bit. I had to I had to get some reference but just keeping the light source true to the composition is going to be key. I want to map in a little darker value. With watercolor, you work generally from light to dark because it's somewhat transparent or non opaque. I'm just going to brush in some of this tall pasture grass that I see in my reference, but taking some liberty with it too, just putting some patches where I think that it would give just enough emphasis but not be terribly distracting. I don't want to de detract from my focal point, which is the face and the overall portrait. These elements behind him are, are just generally the environment or the setting, so making it too detailed could take away from it. So I'm trying to hold back a little and not overwork, but that's my natural tendency. It's just to work this into the ground until, until my paper has got holes in it. So if you do that too, uh, it's a tough struggle to, to know when to stop. Because I'm trying to master all of this soft edge and I want to keep this shirt really light because it's a white shirt. I'm just going to wet everything down and then add my shadows and deeper values for these folds. Just to keep things soft and non-committal. I just don't want to get too dark too quickly and then regret it. just want a light touch on these folds. I think it's so beautiful when people do watercolors that like a big white wedding dress and they have all this blue and violet shadows. I just think it's so beautiful. I'm trying to achieve that here. I'm working very hard to achieve. resting on. I'm assuming that this light is going to bounce back a lot of that hue. So as long as my value's right, I'm just going to choose the local color that's on that car, which happens to be violet. I'm going to get some indigo and just map out these like dark wash jeans. I'm not going to put a lot of detail down there. I don't 
that's not really the the focal point so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time putting a lot of like detail in the pants I think that the viewer will just accept that they're jeans I don't think I have to add a lot more just like John Singer Sargent in his paintings he'll I think he was quoted as saying don't use two marks when one will suffice so I'm always striving towards a more deliberate brush stroke that one brush stroke will do more than you know multiple but it's I'm fighting everything in my nature to do that but I think it's worth trying to achieve because his paintings are beautiful and you really can't argue um, his success but I'm trying my best to make it feel more deliberate and less overworked and I'm using a lot of purple because the light is bouncing off of this car or truck and back on to his shirt and being reflected and bounced around on this on this shirt and the clothing so that's just a really fun part to establish folds and just seeing all the light that comes onto this white clothing. I've been looking forward to painting this part. I'm going to go back to this cow, give it another layer. It's a dark cow, but it's very dappled, has a really distinct pattern on it. And he would have known these cows really well. I know a lot of people think farmers maybe don't pay any attention to them, but farmers around our area, they really, they love their cows so much, and they would really know them apart and know their personalities. You can tell I got that leg a little too, maybe a little too dark, so I just reactivated the paint, kind of rubbed it, and I'm just going to blot it up, just lift that up. We call it lifting. Wet it, dab it, and pull it up. It's about the only way I know to kind of erase watercolor. And how much detail to put in the grass. I'm just gonna dry brush it. So there's a little bit of pigment on my brush, but the bristles are separated, so it's somewhat dry. So I'm just gonna kind of dab and touch and make contact with the paper and kind of flick it outwards just to create a little texture, a little variation so that you get the impression that this pasture has some tall areas to it. Not overwhelming. I don't want it to look like a big field of grass, like wheat, but I just want it to look a little rugged. Just the, just the hint. This was such a fun painting. Thank you for watching it come together, and I hope you have a blessed day and night.